Just before we start today's video, it's worth highlighting that if you've only come to this video because you want to see the Plex performance of different kinds of U Green NAS systems, that's all you care about. Along the bottom of the screen, there are chapters for you to skip ahead immediately to those results. The beginning of this video is going to be talking through where exactly the U Green NAS is at in terms of multimedia, how to install Plex Media Server onto the system, and also how exactly I got to measuring the benchmark and result of this system. But if you don't care about all that and you just want to see how it's performing just go to the chapter on the bottom but apart from that let's start with today's video That is right. If you've been looking at getting the U Green NAS system, you're one of, frankly, over 9,000 users at a time of recording have, you know, backed a total 3.6 million pounds into this project. There's a decent percentage of you that are doing so because you want to use the NAS for multimedia use. And a lot of our early reviews, not only ours, but a number of other YouTube channels out there that have been looking at this product early, a number of us have not really been able to talk about multimedia on these systems. The UGOS uh, NAS. NAS software, the Ugreen NAS operating system, at the time of launching its early beta, did not really have much in the way of particularly useful multimedia capabilities. But recent update for these systems, and I've got the DXP4800 here on the left of the screen, and the DXP480T, the flash model that will be reviewed here on the channel very, very soon, they've rolled out a new software update for this system that, along with a few other little tweaks and improvements, also now includes support of containers. They have added docker support on the systems and that means with docker we can run plex media server there we can go ahead straight away and install uh, docker very very easily it's still beta everything about this software is beta i mean hell you can look at the top of the screen there you can see that some of these icons aren't quite loading in quite right but nonetheless we're able to run plex media server uh, as a docker container there on this system thereby allowing us to look at plex so here on the channel if you're not you know, if you're quite new, I don't, you know, presume that you followed my work in the past. Uh, for those of you that may not be uh, aware, we have talked about Plex on the channel a lot. We have tested a number, and I mean a large number, of different NAS systems over the years to measure the extent of their performance in Plex Media Server. And today is going to be no different than that. But just keep in mind, we are talking about a product going for crowdfunding going through uh, the prototype process, going through the build process, going through tweaks and improvements, and ultimately, these results are still being tested on a prototype device, on a NAS beta software base. So keep that in mind. But um, while we go through these, we're going to be accessing Plex Media Server via the Chrome web browser here. We're going to be looking at 720p, 1080p, uh, 4K, and even 8K multimedia. Now, there's going to be some of you watching this saying, why on earth aren't you using the client app? Why aren't you just using the client app for a mobile, for a tablet, for a f Amazon Fire TV? We need to be able to fully control transcoding and the manipulation of the files on these systems that will become clearer later on. But ultimately, if we were trying to use the client app, it actually streamlines and automates a lot of the of conversions of multimedia throughout our testing whether it comes to the file format and conversion such as hevc or trying to play back certain audio codecs but also just generally in terms of being able to visualize a lot of the information for example if we make our way into the dxp 4800t here we go into our uh, 1080p and 4k test files here and we look at ourselves for example this file down here this is a 30 megabits per second uh, hd file hevc format out there for compression or otherwise known as h.265 if we play back this file here we'll be able to see on the right hand side of the screen that it will show that we are playing this file indeed if we go for that we look at the bottom playing in original quality on the right hand side of the screen playing it back and we can see cpu utilization is virtually non-existent we can even go in and dig a little bit deeper and get more information that the desktop client tool would not have been able to give us so readily there. This is why we use the web browser in order to do it. Now, if we go ahead and keep that file playing, let's rewind that a little bit there. And this time, while the file is playing, we give ourselves a little bit of conversion. Now, we convert this file down to 480p. It's now reacting and transcoding that file for us there. And we can see that HW there that shows that this NAS is using hardware transcoding. For the uninitiated, hardware transcoding is when 
uh, you utilize a specific area of the CPU or utilizing a graphics card that is designed for the manipulation of video files, at least in this context. Now, if you don't utilize a Plex Pass and on your Plex account, we go down to the transcoding option down there, you may see this option here, make my CPU hurt and different kinds of quality settings there. Ultimately, it means that the CPU um, is going to utilize a certain degree of its capabilities in order to reformat that file on a whim. And it's not always going to be because you want to turn your 4K version of Avatar into a teeny tiny 360p version there. But ultimately, all of these tests are going to be utilizing hardware transcoding. And all of these tests are going to be utilizing the default CPU hardware, no, dis no assisted uh, uh, graphics card, there's no assisted memory, these are all the default 8 gig uh, memory that the system arrives with there and we'll be monitoring the CPU and the memory on each of these systems. That is the DXP4800 on the IP ending 172 and on the IP ending 217 we're utilizing the DXP4800+. These systems arrive with different CPUs and indeed the entire gamut of the Ugreen NAS systems as talked about in an article linked in the description, utilize predominantly three different CPUs, the N100 with a cost-effective model, then the Pentium 5 core 8505, and then finally the 10 core Intel i5 12th generation processor. We are going to be looking at these two as I currently do not have the N100 model here in the office, but they both arrive with a decent level of integrated graphics and we'll be hopping back and forth between them throughout the course of this video. So let's get rid of these because we're not going to need these tabs any further and we can crack on with the tests. So let's start with the 4800 plus here. We're going to go straight into some 4K testing here. So we're going to go for a 4K test file there in our 4K area. And for that 4K test, we'll go into the library there. And we're going to go and play a file called Into the Cave of Wonders. It's an HEVC file playing, at, uh, I believe, 12 or I think it's 12 megabit or 16 megabits per second test file there. Listed at the bottom, 24 frames per second, 12 megabit. And it's playing like an absolute charm. If we go to the hardware there, we can see no transcoding is taking place. And we can see CPU utilization is non-existent there. It's not really troubling itself too much. And we can see at the bottom, it's playing back with absolutely no problems whatsoever. And we can skip ahead, go ahead, back and forth, back and forth, no problems playing like a dream. So what about if we introduce some of that hardware transcoding we mentioned earlier on? Let's go ahead and downgrade this file to 720p. So now we're going down to 720p HD file there. And if we go ahead into the specifications and information, we can find out more information about the bitrate, which is still maintained at that 12 um, megabits per second there throughout the progressive playback of this file. And we can see CPU utilization has seen a tiny bump, not loads. But if we go to the top, we can see we are utilizing hardware transcoding and audio transcoding is happening there, but not too much to be troubled with. It's still performing the job very, very well. And remember, this system is running on that Intel i5, uh, sorry, the Intel Pentium processor there. Uh, they're running in the background. There is our clock speed, our Intel Pentium Gold. And that's really it. CPU temperature sitting there at a tidy 40. So nothing too bad there. Ultimately, I'm glad with what we're seeing here. And... You know, for an introductory 4K file, that's playing pretty darn well. Now, to put that into perspective, if we go ahead and kill out of that file, we can sort of see how this compares when we look at the likes of the DXP480T. This is running on that i5 processor there. That i5, a 10-core Intel i5 processor. And I will say, although the temperature does seem high, it's worth highlighting that I've got the system stacked on top of the other device, which is kind of and undermining i think a little bit of the active cooling there we will return to it later on but that really is something i should have addressed uh, when i was setting the device up but if we go into the test performance of our second system here and we go into our 4k files and this time we'll go for the exact same file again playing it inside there on our new system take note of the ip of course ip172 and we're playing it back direct playback no transcoding needed and we're doing fine we can open that up original file format original uh, trans uh, not transcoding, original uh, bitrate, original frames per second, original format, everything is the same. We can go ahead and do ourselves a little bit of craziness. Let's go down to something crazy town banana pants. Let's go down to 160p. So that is turning a 4k file into something that I think would have played on an early 
um, visual player from about two, the year 2000. Um, and right now we've got the file being transcoding, the job is being done, but at what cost? We're seeing that frame rate absolutely die on its bum, and this is quite a horrendous um, ask of this system to be turning 4K into what looks like potato vision. Nonetheless, it seemingly is doing it, but we need to move forward to something more uh, aggressive in terms of movement as we've moved this file down. But nonetheless, the CPU is taking the strain. The hardware transcoding is taking place, as you can see there. It's all been transcoded down. I'm really happy with the level of ease this is handling what is quite an aggressive transcode. Bear in mind, of course, that Plex Media Server, if we're looking at a 4% utilization there, keep in mind just how much memory Plex is going to be utilizing. And moreover, look how much the base level system memory is using compared to Plex Media Server there. But that's enough of that. Let's move into another test there. Next up, we're going to run it. Next up, we're going to run a test of a fairly hefty 60 megabits per second 4K file. This is an 8-bit HEVC file, so that's H.265, and that's going to be running two simultaneous instances here on the web browser. Now, it is also worth highlighting while we're doing this that we do need to look at the utilization of the hardware on the base level system here. This is my Windows PC, and that is going to cause something of a minor overhead. So we are going to come back to the task manager if ever we come across Across any problems during playback but for now let's go ahead and play both these simultaneous instances both utilizing what I assume to be original playback quality there no they are transcoding immediately there this may be an audio um, related matter but as we can see hardware transcoding is kicking in in the case of both instances there and as we minimize this one so we can get a better understanding and they're both playing side by side we can see that transcoding is taking place there in the background we're uh, going down to 2160 this may be a licensing related matter on one of these two systems but nonetheless the system's doing well we're transcoding two files and if we look at the utilization of the hardware we've gone up to a staggering 9% utilization. I'm being sarcastic, 9% is nothing. Um, when you're transcoding to 60 megabits per second bitrate 4K HEVC files, but that is still pretty darn good there for these files to be playing regardless. And we played them all the way through to the close. Lovely stuff there. Let's repeat that test this time with the DXP4800. So let's go ahead and perform largely the same test, and this time using the much more powerful i5 processor there. So to make sure we don't cut anything out, make this lovely and clear, we're going to be go ahead this time with Beauty of Taiwan. So we'll get Beauty of Taiwan up there. And again, this is utilizing the IP172, which is the IP of the DXP4800 um, Plus uh, NVMe flash system. So let's get that on there, 4K files, Beauty of Taiwan. And we're going to repeat that exact same process. So playback, playback. Get that on there, minimize it down just a fraction while it prepares for that playback. We're seeing hardware transcoding happening there on the screen. So we can have a look there. We've got the hardware transcoding in the case of both. Zoom down, look at CPU utilization. And we're looking at a rather modest 4.89%. We're going up to 6, 5 to 6% there on the right hand side of the screen, playing back that file. Overall, Pretty happy with what we're seeing here. And again, if there is a drop in frame rate, I apologize in advance. There's only so much I can do in order to prevent that. If we look at my system, we can see my system here. We're sitting at a tidy 60, uh, 50 to 60% utilization of my onboard graphics card there and CPU utilization at 30% there. But we're playing the file. It's playing back fine. And you know what? While we're here, hell, let's just introduce a third one just to keep things interesting. So let's go ahead and play ourselves a third version of that file just to, you know, tax the system, give it a kick in the nudges. We've got that up on there. No, it's not. It's just duplicating what we've already got. So why don't we just go ahead and create ourselves a new one, going to 4K trailers, and we'll go ahead and play that file we had earlier on. We're just going to be going back and playing Roast Duck. So we've got now got um, Roast Duck and those two Beauty of Taiwan's, all of which are hardware transcoding 4K uh, natively there. If we go down to the bottom, we can see CPU utilization there is now at around 7.5% there while we're playing back these files. Overall, happy with what we're seeing here. Let's minimize that file. And do you know what? Why not? Well, let's throw caution to the wind, shall we? Let's throw ourselves into the cave of wonder just for the hell of it. Let's 
open up another one here this will be beauty of taiwan play back that file play back from it we're just going to keep hitting this file like mad and what have we got going on inside here scrolling out now we've got all four of these files one playing back in original three playing back in transcoding there and we go to the cpu on that i5 the i5 cpu and we are utilizing again around seven close to eight percent yes we are utilizing that thanks to the use of hardware transcoding to get the job done but nonetheless that is a really really good figure to be um uh, transcoding or at least natively because of the compression format of three of those files such a large amount of multimedia there so now let's scale things up with the jellyfish test files should be a link in the description if you want to take advantage of these files yourself but ultimately it means i've got a big pile of files here that range from a nice simplistic three megabits per second 1080p file all the way down to a hyper aggressive 400 megabits per second 4k ultra hd highly efficient video codec 10 bit hdr file before we go any further there are going to be some users watching this video that will say I don't need transcoding. What's the point of transcoding? Why don't you just convert the files in advance? Why aren't you enjoying the files in the biggest file format? I get that. There's a lot of users out there that will argue against the utilization and the benefits of transcoding and file conversions. But it's worth highlighting, one, some devices out there, be they client devices, tablets, mobiles, or even desktop devices, such as uh, Amazon Fire TV, and the likes of uh, PlayStation 5 and even PlayStation 4, do not natively allow um, HEVC or highly efficient video codec or H.265 playback. You can't even get a license applied to some of those devices. So you will be forced to use a system such as a DXP4800 Plus to convert that file on the fly in order to play back that file when needed. You might have a collection of decades of media. You don't want to effectively duplicate all that. Uh, of all that hot data and then warm data to just have copies of all of your stuff you want a nas that can convert those files and whereas h.264 is a compression technique used by the media industry to convert files from the cinema to the home is open source hevc is privately owned and requires a license and not all devices have that and more files coming out in 4k and even 8k force you to use HEVC or even some of the new up and coming compression techniques so do keep that in mind when it comes to conversions and particularly if you own avatar in 4k 4k or 8k and you just want to watch it on a beach on the other side of the world with ease so let's go ahead straight away and play back ourselves a pretty dense file i'm going to go in to hd this time and i'm going to go for a 100 megabits per second hd file in hevc Let's play back this file and go straight in. I'm going to immediately go into our selves conversion. We're going to go for the automated conversion there and we're going to see it push all the way through. It's fine. We're using hardware transcoding there. Absolutely fine. No bother, no foul. And again, we are using particularly dense bitrate files. This is a 100 megabits per second bitrate file that we've scaled down. Uh, so if we go into the scaling there, get more information about it, we can find out this is a particularly dense file. That bitrate especially is absolutely massive. Um, but it's still playing absolutely fine there. If we come out of that file, and again, we don't need to, but why don't we go ahead and just replicate that test this time on the i5 powered uh, device there. So if we just go ahead straight into the the other system we're going to again emulate it we're going to again go straight into the conversion we're not going to bother with native playback we're going to let the system play as we can see it's playing fine it's going all the way through with hardware transcoding and cpu utilization is comedically low obviously because that cpu has not only got more power under the bonnet but when it comes to integrated graphics it's got a more powerful integrated graphics engine. I believe it's the XE uh, uh, Iris graphics engine there being utilized. So absolutely fine there. So let's now go on to another one of our multi-playback files here. And we're going to go back into the Pentium. And this time we're going to go for a particularly dense 200 megabits per second 4K file. This is H.264, so at least you don't have uh, any problems with regards to licensing of H.265. Let's go ahead and play that file. Again, we'll stick with that. It will come on this screen very, very shortly. We're just going to push immediately into conversion because of network bandwidth problems. But we're going to go straight in immediately and it's going to play that far. But while it's doing it, why don't we do ourselves a favor and play ourselves another instance of this file? We're going to play this particularly dense file. And again, we're going to play it there. It's probably going to duplicate it from the test below. Yes, it is. 
So let's have another stab at that test. Again, this is on the IP217. This is utilizing that Pentium. So let's redo that test. So we're going for the 200 megabits per second file. Then again, we're going to constitute transcoding every single time. So we're going to play back that file. And again, every single time, we're going to force the system to go ahead. We're seeing a slight uh, apprehension there, I would argue, from the system playing back that file. I'm not sure if this is us overburdening the system, but I don't normally see that kind of interruption there while I'm doing a lot of these conversions still nonetheless as they're getting added to the right hand side of the screen it's not been quite as snappy as i'd like to see lining up these files in order for us to bench test this performance and we go ahead and convert them all one by one push them through get them all converting there and as you can see here we've got the hardware transcoding down we're starting to get that hardware transcoding kicking we've got a couple of auto standard ones being played the cpu now sees that uh, realistic spike as we're playing back some of these files in this rather aggressive fashion but still nonetheless it is playing these files and it's really annoying that two of them have actually finished playing uh, while we've been doing this it's done such a smooth job of it super annoying there but for now let's make our way over to that of the uh, i5 powered dxp4800 and repeat those exact same tests this time with an hevc file Okay, so this time we're going for a 200 megabits per second 4K Ultra HD HEVC 10-bit file there. Uh, just before I play back this file, I will also add, it's worth touching on the scale of the files we're talking about here. To put it into a little bit of perspective, when we go into our Plex Test Media folders here, and we go into our 4K files, not those ones there, this folder here. Don't worry, I'll be zooming in. I know it's quite small there. But if we go into the 1080p and 4K test file area, and go into the files i just want to give you some perspective on the file sizes that we're talking about right now because that 200 megabits per second 4k file is around about 720 megabytes per second there if you count the rounding up consequently this is a huge file for 30 seconds of footage and yes later on we are going to be looking at the mega file that we test here on the channel quite a lot but for now let's head back in and start bench testing our file so let's go ahead play back this file we want to take advantage of transcoding every single time if we get that opened up there go for the transcoding definitely we're feeling a little bit more responsiveness here on the i5 model allowing us to go for a number of these options and as we got the last one lined up there the four insanely dense files that we're getting ready to play back there we've got at least three of them lined up so far we can have a little look at my system again utilization is not being maxed out all four of these hardware transcoding there we're definitely seeing a slowdown on the left hand side of the screen and the cpu utilization well it's not bad but i'm not seeing fluid playback we're seeing two of these files playing indeed three of these files are playing and finally we've seen that so it's whether we forgive that little catch-up delay there that's not terrible for the kind of operation we're running here this kind of conversion and hardware transcoding that we're performing here in the background all of which are being maintained in 4k as well it's there was a slight slowdown there but i'm prepared to give it the slight benefit of the doubt there because it was quite a lot of activity all happening at once and all of these files playing here in the background again we can bring them all up they're all playing i think there was definitely a slowdown there in the background but not necessarily i would say beyond this rather unrealistic playback that i'm going for here let's go into our heaviest file now we're going to run a few multiple instances of our 4k 400 megabits per second monster file so next up we'll go for our heaviest file that 400 megabits per second we're not we know we can play it natively as is we're not going to bother with that we're going to go for the conversion there and that should appear on the right hand side of the screen in just a moment there we are we're transcoding there we've got the hardware transcoding all kicking through sweet as a nut and it's converted it to h.264 and right now absolutely fine we're looking at cpu utilization there ignore all of this that was when i accidentally closed all these tabs and had to get stuff done and right now we're seeing around about 10 percent of our hardware resources being utilized by this operation here needless to say we are going to double down on this but let's while we're here why don't we go a little bit nuts and download it down to 480p frankly an insane downgrade and an insane compression to put this 400 megabits per second file down to 480p but nonetheless as we see utilization there it's getting the job done lovely stuff there so 
I think that's pretty good. So now why don't we go ahead and set ourselves up for multiple instances on this file and see just what this um, Intel Pentium processor can actually do. Okay, so this time we've got five instances of this file all playing at once. So let's go ahead and get the ball rolling. And again, all of them, we're going to be using those conversions there every single time just to make sure this file is definitely being handled as maximum as possible. So let's go ahead, keep playing all of the files. Remember, this is the Pentium processor version that we're playing here in the background. This is the biggest file that I own. So if we leave that running there in the background, we can see they're all gradually being um, added one by one here. We've got three of them so far, but we're definitely not seeing full playback yet of all of these files. Some of them are still taking their time. So it looks like we've reached the maximum of what this CPU can do. Unfortunately, it looks like this has been a failure. The system was not able to play back all of these files all at once, but also let's be fair this is such an unrealistic expectation of this pentium i'm not going to be too hard on it i'm definitely not going to say it passed and it's definitely gutterballed some of these and it's oversaturated the cpu to such a point which i'm pretty certain this cpu if we uh, refresh that page then see what our new temperature is uh, for this plate uh, this processor it's gone up to 48 degrees again i'm pretty sure that is not accurate but nonetheless it looks like that was not a success there for our densest playback some of them are playing which is nice but certainly i would not call that in any way a full success for us there but let's go ahead and skip over now to the other nas and test the i5 with the same ludicrous test okay so let's get the ball rolling again 400 megabits per second this is the file being tested on the dxp 4800 plus let's take a little look at that cpu as well while we're here just to see what temperature it's registering at the moment they're saying 56 degrees we'll come back to that later on and let's go ahead and play back our crazy town banana pants file with conversions in every single instance let's go ahead one by one bring them up on there make sure we've got all this live and happening here on screen for you guys play there convert there again we're just converting the same high density file all being played we're not converting it down any lower we're just changing it for h.265 into h.264 so we can maintain as high quality as we can or simultaneously not losing anything so at the moment as we can see now we're seeing much faster picking up of all of those individual conversions that we're attempting there let's minimize that one and we'll go ahead and just see how that's coming together all of those playbacks there and if we zoom it down we can see right there cpu utilization is certainly high of course it's high we didn't expect it to be anything but high but i will say it is playing back more instances of that file indeed the first one has already finished we've only got four left as we go to the bottom of the screen we can see three of those instances of that insane file are all playing fine that one down there that's the only one that's hanging so we have lost one of them but nonetheless it's still pretty darn good for such an insanely large file remember 1.4 gigabytes of data uh, compressed into 30 seconds of 400 megabits per second that's pretty darn insane that kind of gives you some idea about the hardware transcoding capabilities of this processor here so we're going to close out this video looking at some 8k again the capabilities of what we can actually output in 8K are going to be kind of limited. Notwithstanding just how much my GPU is going to be absolutely tanked by this 8K, it has to be said that Plex itself isn't quite optimized for 8K yet. Nonetheless, there are going to be those of you looking at purchasing the DX4800 Plus or that DXP48T or any of the other devices for that matter in the Ugreen crowdfunding campaign there, and you're going to be wondering about future proofing. So let's go ahead straight away and play ourselves an 8k file this is an 8k file that is playing again this is on the uh, dxp 4800 so that's a dxp 4800 running on a pentium processor there it's going straight into a conversion and unsurprisingly we're seeing a brick wall we're not seeing anything now we are going to try several different 8k files but for now that's not really looking like much of a success rate for us there i mean we could look into automatic conversions there 
and we're not really going to see much. We've not even seen it. We've seen the CPU here on the right hand side see an absolute belter spike, but that spike coming down normally means that the system is hanging on this operation. So let's go ahead and try Japan 8K and see how we do with that. Bring that up at the bottom. We're seeing conversions. We're going to look at the CPU. The CPU is spiking. But once again, whether it is a bottleneck caused by my own system or as we see incredibly low frame rate playback, um, any kind of noteworthy discussion to be had, it should be said that we can't even use hardware transcoding on this 8K regardless of that CPU being quite powerful. The software technique, the efficiency and the optimization techniques are simply not there in terms of the Pentium processor that we're trying for here. What about if we go ahead and try and convert it down to something more manageable? This is bringing it down to a 1080p 8 megapixel file. There's going to be some of you saying, oh, well, that should play fine, isn't it? You can play 1080p. Remember, this file and the bit rate and the sheer resolution, the amount of data, the number of pixels are just phenomenal and therefore... I'm not going to be angry at this system for hitting quite a phenomenal CPU mark and still not playing this file. I am going to test this shortly on the i5, but although I'm not going to say this is a success, because it surely isn't, I will say, at least early doors, those aren't, you know, they're hopeful things for the future that at least it gave the old college try indeed it's hanging so much that as we play our second file the system hasn't even finished running at that first one i could not call this system 8k ready but again in the system's defense i'm not sure i could say it's purely the system's fault when 8k optimization in plex media server and indeed plex client tools is simply not there yet so if we come out of this and we make our way this time into the DXP4800, and if we have a little look, look there, as we can see, that CPU utilization, uh, sorry, uh, temperature is at 56 degrees from our previous testing there. Let's go back in there, still at 56. This time, as we exit, oh no, it is actually playing 8K. I'm going to circle back to the DXP4800. Good God, it's playing it. I stand corrected. I mean... It is playing it in a kind of not playing it way. So if we go ahead and get the information there and just see how exactly we're outputting and what we're seeing here while it's playing, it's it's certainly trying, but I wouldn't say that is pure. And again, so much work went into it. I'm not really going to be calling that a tremendous success. Nonetheless, that conversion there, pretty darn good, although we are obviously scaling down uh, significantly, um, not too much actually in its defense, so there is some 8K um, success here. If we go for another 8K file, let's go for Space Station. We're going to stick with that DXP4800 there just a wee bit longer. Um, we're not going to go for the shuffle there, no point. Got the conversion in. We're converting it down to a 138 megabits per second 8K uh, file there. And again, CPU utilization is once again hanging for us there. It's not really going anywhere. If we go to the top, we're seeing Space Station at least be attempted. But again, it's software transcoding, not hardware transcoding. Again, the result of 8K just not being optimized yet in terms of Plex and in terms of a lot of hardware clients. So again, here we are this time on the DXP4800. We can go into the 8K files here. We've got the same 8K files. We're going to try and play back the exact same files just to see uh, where the optimization and the system hardware resource problems lie. Uh, so let's go ahead with Helium Fire 8K. Let's bring that up on there. We're playing immediately into a conversion. And you know what? We can see it being converted there. And again, still no hardware transcoding that CPU, that i5. And I can hear the fan on the uh, DXP4800 kicking in quite substantially there in the background. So if we refresh this page here and get a little bit more uh, hardware resource information of it. And again, I know by doing this, we are giving uh, the file a little bit more time in order to get the job done um, there in the background. Let's go ahead and go into the about pages then come back to that CPU. Temperature hasn't seemingly changed too much, but how much of that is the beta software not tracking it very well? I'm not sure, but not really going to call this a success once again. Let's go for an automatic conversion instead because it made that attempt, as you can see there, but it didn't really be able to finish it. It kind of started, but clearly the conversion was hanging there. I'm not really seeing any success. Let's go in. We'll go with Japan 8K. So earlier on, 
we saw this con uh, successfully converted there, uh, at least on a very, very low frame rate there on the Intel uh, Pentium processor there. So let's see how this goes on the i5 there. And not really anything. It just seems to be too much for this to play with. So again, I'm not really feeling that 8K is going to happen on this system, at least until Plex is able to make the most of the hardware. Whether, you know, any of that is anything to do with the hardware, because those of you that followed the channel before, you'll know that we have played back 8K media on these NAS devices before. It's not unheard of. And if we refresh that page, which is seemingly hanging, let's go back in, we're seeing that CPU utilization begin to spike. So chances are this will eventually play, but look where the spike is. It's not Plex, it's the system. And again, that's another one of those elements we've talked about before in our early reviews about the optimization of the Ugreen machine. Plex isn't the problem here. The system is, and in terms of hardware resources being utilized, the difference is massive there. And the same goes. Look at the difference in sp um, between some of these spikes here. And again, we are running this as a container, which is prone for uh, kind of poor overlap sometimes. But nonetheless, as we play our third uh, 8K file there, let's go down to the bottom. Let's go for Space Station 8K and play back that file there. We can see a playback error. The system is clearly suffering problems playing back these files. And if we refresh this page, we'll go in and we'll arbitrarily, we'll select Patagonia 8k just for the hell of it and again we'll go for conversion of maximum whether that will help us who's to say we're seeing that CPU spike happen once again and again that is a system spike not plex just lots of little uh, things like that that make me not only still continue to say that Plex isn't 8K ready, I'm not sure this system is 8K ready, at least in terms of conversions and handling of those files. And again, the bottleneck is not to do with my local recorded system here, as you can see. But I think that's the end of the 8K files. And I think what we'll do is we'll summarize today's video and say what we liked, what we didn't, and what to bear in mind. Well, what do we think? Well, I think it's pretty obvious you can run Plex on these Ugreen NAS devices. I do think there is elements of optimization needed, and I'm not going to say that I think they're 8K ready, but who's to blame for it being 8K ready? It's too early to say. We've had too many instances already in the past of 8K multimedia not playing nice with a lot of modern hardware when it comes to conversions and playback, a lot of those particular compression techniques. And as we see more advanced compression techniques and codecs arrive on the scene to handle 8K and a number of those get integrated and handled in Plex, I think that is when we're truly going to be able to bench test 8K to a meaningful degree on systems like these. I'll say between the two of them, the benefits of the i5 model running Plex Media Server, they're definitely there. There was definitely a lot more response and there was a lot more hardware resources at our disposal, but they weren't dramatically larger. And unless you're not going to be, and unless you are going to be utilizing in particularly high end 4K dense bitrate media across multiple instances at once, and you've got the network slash internet connectivity to support it, in those uh, situations, certainly the i5 will be beneficial. But the Intel Pentium processor there really did hold its own. And throughout the course of this testing, although both of them did have the occasional fall, I will say that Intel Pentium 8505 uh, CPU we've tested on the channel before in Plex really did hold its own. And it's going to be really interesting. Now we've got Docker support uh, for the beta UGOS software on these uh, Ugreen NAS um, prototypes to be able to see what more we can do with these systems. Maybe we'll be doing some other multimedia server stuff. Maybe we'll be doing some smart home stuff. Who knows? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. But ultimately, between these two systems, I would still say that regardless of which one you go for, there is a decent base of hardware. Just as we said in our uh, DXP4800 Plus review and the soon-to-be-arriving uh, DXP480T review, the base level hardware versus value price point, even at the RRP and not that ridiculous price point they're rolling the Kickstarter out on, is still pretty darn god this, uh, good. The software is not there yet. It's better than it was during this review. They've added new features, they've optimized it, and I've already seen increases in performance during my early testing of the i5 flash system uh, prior to the latest update than in the most recent one. So much so, I've had to retest a lot of my 10 GB and NVMe tests on it for that very reason. The system has still got ages left on crowdfunding. There is no rush. Unless you want to get one of the early backer ones and you feel confident in it, then 
I still don't think there's a mad rush to jump on this. There's links in the description to go to it if you choose, but right now this is definitely a system that's going to be available after that crowdfunding. It's definitely going to cost more than it's going to cost during that crowdfunding. Ask these 9,151 people, but there's still no avoiding that you green are doubling down on this system quite a lot. And whether it is you're going to utilize their own systems uh, and their own software, or you're going to go for the likes of Plex or install a third-party OS, something that um, Ugreen apparently have now softened their position on quite substantially, I will say right now that I like how this performed in Plex. And although it's not 8K ready, I'll say it's substantially 4K ready across the board. Links in the description to all of the other reviews, guides, and more, as well as links to the Ugreen Kickstarter now is down there so you can check out what's available, what isn't, and whether you want to go for this. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. Request in the description in the comments, uh, I should say just the comments, and I'll see you next time.